everybody, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna do a quick brake job on a 2011 Subaru Forester. We're gonna do pads and rotors. I like doing both at the same time. It just makes for a nice clean brake installation, better performance and longevity. So first thing you wanna do, jack the vehicle up, put on jack stands and pull off the front tire. Now we want to turn the wheels so we have better access to our bolts on the back side of this caliper. First thing I like to do is take a flathead screwdriver, put it in between one of these windows in the caliper, push it up against the rotor, and then pull the whole caliper over. And what that's doing is putting the piston or pushing the piston in as this caliper slides over. That gives us a head start in re-pushing or resetting our piston back in. Just do as much as you can till it bottoms out. Now we have two 14 millimeter bolts. And we'll suspend our caliper out of the way. Just hang it on the strut spring. Now we'll knock our pads out. We'll also take off our hardware. Now you can do this with the caliper bracket on the vehicle or off the vehicle, either one. I just find having it on the vehicle acts like another set of hands holding it for me. So we'll pop this off. There we go. And then we'll just scrape either with a flat scraper, screwdriver, or pull this off and use a wire brush. But we're just scraping out these channels, getting any of that heavy corrosion and debris off. And then usually the top doesn't have as much as the bottom. All right now we'll take our slide pins out just off the boot there. The boot stays on the bracket and that pulls off our little slide pin. We want to wipe it off real good. We're going to apply new caliper grease. When you get your parts from the auto parts store, wherever you get them, you can purchase a couple of packets of uh, caliper grease. And then as they go back in, what I like to do is just give it a good twist. We'll do that to the bottom one. Now there is a top and a bottom. You'll notice this bottom one has a little rubber sleeve around it. That's why I like doing them one at a time. That way I don't accidentally get them mixed up, forget which hole they go into. So just some more caliper grease. Slide in, give it a twist. Now we can pull our bracket off. That's gonna be a 17 millimeter. Because this bottom bolt for the strut kinda gets in your way a little, I just have a little long extension just to help me get past it. There we go. And then this comes out. We'll re-examine those channels. If they need a little more cleaning up, we'll go ahead and do that. Now our rotor comes off. Now this one came off pretty easy. If you're having trouble getting it off, just using a sledge, beating on it, that vibration will knock it loose. So now we want to look at our wheel hub. We want to see if there's any big corrosion. We we'll take it a wire wheel or a flat scraper and just get off any heavy corrosion we can see. We want a nice flat surface for our new rotor. Once that looks good, what I like to do is use some fluid film. If you don't have fluid film, just anti-seize is good enough. Just a little rust inhibitor, a little corrosion inhibitor right on the hub face. You're not getting it on your wheel studs just right there on the face. That'll help the new rotor come off easier in the future if it needs to be removed for whatever, maybe future repairs and that rotor needs to come off, it'll just smooth right off like butter. Now our new rotor from the factory has a rust inhibitor, little coating that goes on it. We wanna go ahead and wipe that off, get some brake clean and just wipe that off really good. Otherwise, it'll cause your brakes to smoke and smell for however long it takes to burn it off. So if you do forget, I, I guess that's okay because it'll eventually burn off. It'll just smoke and smell for a while. All right. Now we'll just take our rotor, put it on. And we'll take one of the old lug nuts and just screw it on as far as we can. Now it won't go down all the way, 
but it'll go down enough just to help hold our new rotor on while we're putting our brake pads and stuff on. So it'll move a little, but better than not having it on there. And just wipe where my handprint was. Now we'll take our new hardware and put it on our caliper bracket. The hardware that looks like it has like sideburns, that goes on the bottom. So we'll put that on our bottom one. Just like that, it should snap in. Make sure it bottoms out all the way. And then the other one goes right on top. Perfect, nice and easy. Now our caliper bracket's ready to get put back on. Boom, snug that down for now. And those are torqued to 59 foot-pounds. After I torque my bolts, I like to mark them. That way when I go back through before I button everything up, I can quickly see that I torqued them like I should have. Now we can put our pads on. These pads are a little interesting. They have this little spring retainer down at the bottom. That goes towards the bottom and it rests on that sideburn. So this one is the out one. It's kind of interesting putting them in. There we go. There's that one. The inside one and my outside one came out. So we'll put that back in. Now my inside one came out. There we go. Now we can take our caliper. We want to push back these pistons. There's lots of different ways to push back a piston. I'll have some pictures of different methods, different tools out there designed for this. This is a really easy caliper piston to push in. So I'm just going to use a pair of like vice grip little C looking thingies. So I'll push one in and while I'm pushing the other one in, because it is dual piston, I'll hold on to this one so it doesn't come back out. All right, that should be good enough. You can put this back on, make sure that your brake hose isn't kinked. My bottom one popped out again. There we go. Now I'll put these back on. Snug those down. Those are torqued to 20 foot-pounds. We'll mark them. All right, that is pretty much it. What I like to do is pump up the brakes, make sure that pedal gets nice and firm. Then we'll straighten out the wheel, put the tire back on, and go for a quick test drive to break in or burnish our new brakes. All right, burnishing our brakes is important. What we want to do is get the vehicle up to about 30, 35 miles an hour, and then come to a nice, solid, good stop. Now, you don't want to lock the brakes, but just a good, solid stop, nice, firm press on the pedal, and then bring it back up again, 30, 35 miles an hour, come to a nice, solid, good stop. Do that about four, five times, and you should be good to go. All right, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.